Hi you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back or if it's your first time here then welcome to the channel. So at the timing of this video being released, I am exactly 20 weeks or halfway through my third whole food plant-based pregnancy. I have been vegan or plant-based for nearly a decade now. So before my first pregnancy, I was already about three years well into this diet and lifestyle. So I really have that to thank for making it such a breeze to stick with it throughout. So I surveyed you guys on my Instagram stories and said, drop your pregnancy and second trimester questions here and I will be sure to answer them in a YouTube video. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I have my phone by my side so I can read through some of these questions for you guys. I broke everything down into categories, so feel free to shift around if there's one area you really wanna focus on or jump to. So first of all, just some overall general questions. Then really quick, I wanna talk skincare after that eat and then move and then rest, of course, to go with the theme of our channel. So of course, one of the biggest questions is always, what am I eating? So the first thing I'm gonna say is go back to our old videos. Even last week, there was a very current what I am eating in a day on my plant-based pregnancy. So be sure to check that video out to see the most current version of that. There are several other pregnancy related videos on this channel from my past two pregnancies and a couple from this pregnancy. So number one is a very big overarching question. Are we doing a hospital birth or a home birth? In case you aren't familiar with my previous two birth stories, both of them were completely natural, unmedicated hospital births under the care of a midwife and a doula. Dusty was by my side. Max's labor was about 12 hours long. Liv's was about six hours long, so cut in half. This time around, I am leaning more towards a home birth, but I'm not entirely sold yet, just because I come from a family of doctors. I come from a very medically minded family full of physicians, nurses. So I'm getting a very medically minded viewpoint from that side. On the other side, almost everybody that we're friends with or that we surround ourselves with on social media are very holistic and natural minded. So Dusty and I always find ourselves kind of bobbling and bouncing somewhere in between. So right now I am under the care of an amazing plant-based Christian midwife here in Florida. This will be my first birth in Florida. So the previous two were in our home state of Nebraska. So it's completely new territory. It feels like a completely new experience, living basically in the tropics, finding new people to connect with, a new community for this birth. So I'm really, really excited that I found such a perfect midwife who I really jive with. And she's just so supportive of everything that we're all about. And I'm also interviewing doulas. So I have talked to two really amazing women who are very similar, but also very unique and have a lot to bring to the table. So I'm certain that whichever I choose, it's going to be an amazing team of people around me to support me during my birth. One of the major reasons I'm considering a home birth this time around is just because my labor with Liv was so short. It was half the time of Max's and I'm like, wow, what if it's cut in half again and it's a three hour labor? I wanna make sure that we can do things safely without having a car baby on the way to the hospital, but also because I have so much confidence in my midwife and her team. She is part of three generations of midwives. She travels to Africa every year and trains midwives over there because that is their primary form of birthing. It's been that way in Europe for years and years and years. I trust the process, I trust my body. I'm learning more and more to look at it not as a medical condition to be treated, but as a natural process of the female body. So I grew up with so many pets and watching my cats go to a quiet corner of the room and comfortably, peacefully birth multiple kittens. It just feels natural and safe and right. And on top of that, the midwives bring with them all of the experience and expertise, tools and even drugs and alternative natural remedies, even medications and drugs like Pitocin, if you're hemorrhaging, everything is there in their toolkit and then some because they also have the herbal alternatives and remedies that can also help. I had a question if I am foregoing the scans this time around and I think that's probably in reference to ultrasound. And yes, I am so far foregoing them 
Typically around the 20 weeks is when you can do the full body anatomy scan. Ultrasound is essentially high frequency sound waves. They do disrupt baby. They can impact baby's development. So I have chosen to forego it this time around. Also, ultrasound isn't technically diagnostic because there are several things that could be present that could be missed. And there are also things that can sometimes be seen that aren't actually there, leading to all kinds of misdiagnoses or missing an actual true diagnosis. Either way, it's not going to change the outcome. I trust my body. I feel like everything has checked out fine. The midwife has used the Doppler on me twice to hear the baby's heartbeat, just kind of for my own reassurance and peace of mind. I also bought a fetal stethoscope on Amazon. So she said right around this time is when I can start using that and hearing baby's heartbeat in a very safe way at home and the kids can listen. So look into that. I'll link the one that I got. One last overarching question is, how did I become comfortable with the bodily changes and weight gain that comes with pregnancy? So I know for a lot of us, especially if you perhaps have a past history of disordered eating, it can be very extremely difficult to overcome the bodily changes that your body naturally has to go through when becoming pregnant. So it was really difficult for for me with Max, first off, because he was a surprise pregnancy. We had always thought about maybe having kids, but the fact that it was unplanned just caught me off guard. I didn't feel like I was ready. And then when the changes started happening, I was really, really anxious. I was so afraid of varicose veins and stretch marks and all of these things. And while some of those things did happen to me, others did not. And in the end, I feel like I fared pretty well simply by saying, look, some things are out of my control and I'm gonna do what's in my control to take as good of possible care of my body as I can, and in the end, to thank myself for what it gave me. And honestly, the birth itself made all of those previous problems seem so minuscule compared to the immense amount of love that I experienced, and self-empowerment and strength, I could not have asked for a better birth experience. I just felt so confident. So all of that kind of shoved everything else out of the way. And I will say, I still have creeping thoughts that come into my mind about, you know, all of the things again, the varicose veins that always plagued me on the back of my right leg. I'm actually wearing a uh, compression leg stocking right now. I can link it below. I like it because it's not both legs all the way up. It's just from here to here. And it has like um, kind of a sticky um, stuff at the top that helps it to stay in place and not slide down. So it's been a lifesaver. It just helps with circulation and keeping things compressed during the day. I'm not showing a whole lot yet. So let me show you the bump. Here is my 20 week bump, as you can see. <laughs> I'm not showing a whole lot yet, but I have gotten some questions about skincare. First off, what's safe to use? What shouldn't I use? What should I use? I try to keep it as simple as possible. My absolute favorite product is called Herbal Face Food. I've mentioned before on this channel. Um, none of this is sponsored. These are just what I'm using. So a big one with skincare to avoid is retinol. And other than that, I just try to keep it as clean and straightforward as possible. So that's why herbal face food is my favorite. It's so clean you could eat it. It doesn't contain any preservatives or fillers or chemicals or fragrances. It's just 100% botanicals and it contains a, an ORAC score that blows every other skincare out of the water. So it's touted as the most potent multi-correction anti-aging serum on the market. It truly does everything. It covers all the bases from hyperpigmentation to fine lines and wrinkles and acne and scarring, all that stuff. So I recommend starting with Serum One and the cure for spot treating. It's literally a salad for your face. So they always say feed your face first. You can use it with other skincare, like I use it with my Osea, but you just wanna make sure that your herbal face food goes on first and then you use your other skincare and or makeup after. And then at nighttime, I follow it with the cream, which is another herbal face food. So this one's very, very moisturizing. I feel like I'm like marinating at bedtime. 
and their newest is the eye cream. I will say there were many skincare products, makeup products even, that I felt very averted to. I had aversions to during first trimester and I took that as a sign to just kind of play it conservatively and keep it super simple and super clean. So I really, really trust Herbal Face Food and I'll link my 20% off code below. Full body, I'll run through really quick. So I've been very religious with doing my dry brushing to help with sloughing off dead skin cells. Also helps with lymphatic drainage and blood flow. So it's great for circulation, again, for these veins. It makes my skin feel amazing. It helps your skincare to absorb better. I even run it over my stomach. And then to help prevent stretch marks, during the day, it's either the Osea Andaria Algae Body Butter or this one from 100% Pure. It's a vanilla bean whipped body butter, both super clean, both super effective. So I like to use those during the day so my clothing doesn't get greasy or oily, but then at nighttime, I use Mother's Special Blend. I have used this and those with all three pregnancies. This is amazing for nighttime, especially for your growing, expanding belly. And last and finally for skin, this is Ancient Minerals Magnesium Oil. So this is a transdermal magnesium. I swear by it for those restless legs, which tend to come up during pregnancy. It's really important to stay on top of your magnesium. So putting this on at bedtime really helps and I will say another thing that I have issues with that I don't usually is body odor. So my pits get really smelly. Postpartum is probably the worst when you're sweating out all the extra hormones, but this stuff works so good. And I have been strongly against deodorant for basically since I was 13. It's a long story. I'll tell it some other time, but I do this. Two sprays, rub it together, rub my pits and Seriously, no BO for the entire day, even while I'm working out and after, just those two sprays does it, so check that out. So jumping right into food, I get asked a lot about cravings. I honestly haven't had any cravings since being outside of that first trimester window. So one question in particular was, what do you do if you crave meat? Do you eat meat or do you eat something else or how do you deal with that? So I've heard mixed things from other pregnant mamas. A lot of people say they're used to eating meat and they feel strong aversions to meat. And then there are also people like myself who are vegan or plant-based and fall into, oh my gosh, I'm craving meat, what do I do? Personally, this has never been me. I have absolutely never craved meat and maybe part of that is that I was already three years into my vegan journey before even my first pregnancy, I'm not sure, but the most important thing I would attribute it to is iron deficiency or low iron. Your body is asking you for iron. So one of the best plant sources is lentils. Red lentils are amazing in curries and soups. They really thicken it up. They almost kind of disintegrate or a green lentil to replace meaty dishes and like a lasagna or a chili or even like a pasta bolognese. You can make meatballs and um, all kinds of good veggie burgers. So go for lentils. They actually have more iron pound for pound than red meat. I would also recommend maybe you just get blood work checked again to make sure that your iron is where it should be. So during first trimester when just absolutely nothing sounded good, as far as unhealthy cravings, those are cravings that we don't want to fall victim to or give into. Honestly, I can say for myself, when I did have a few cravings, like for some type of restaurant food, when I did indulge that craving, I felt absolutely awful the next day. It was like a massive hangover, like a food hangover. So I just learned to power through those cravings with nourishing foods instead. And on that note, nausea. I've had questions about how to get through the first trimester nausea. What did you eat? How did you cope? How did you stay hydrated? and hydration is the number one thing. So my midwife told me to try and drink at least one gallon of fresh filtered water per day. And if you're feeling nauseous, it means that you're already 72 hours behind that hydration. So if you hydrate now, it's going to help you 72 hours later, essentially. So if you're feeling awful, get a couple of solid days of hydration under your belt and then keep that ball moving. For me, extra super cold, water that I kept refrigerated really helped or iced water. Foods that really helped me during first trimester were a lot of simple bland foods and the only fruits I really felt like I could stomach were orange juice. So either we would do fresh squeezed orange juice or just a simple one ingredient organic orange juice from the store. 
and then frozen like super, super thick banana nice cream, usually with a scoop of vanilla Sun Warrior protein added in and Honeycrisp apples. So those have been a lifesaver because they're in season. And then other things that really helped me were brown rice cakes with peanut butter. I was going through so much peanut butter. I don't know why, because I never eat peanut butter. I'm usually an almond butter person, but great source of healthy fat and protein. So I did rice cakes and peanut butter, and then sometimes some banana slices on top. Or I would do the same on the Ezekiel 49 bread, which is sprouted whole grain. It's so nutritious. So I would toast that spread on some peanut butter, slice on some bananas. As far as dinner goes, the main simple things I ate when I was really nauseous were pasta with a good hearty red sauce with the lentils added in. Dusty made me so many good dinners. Um, some of them went down well and some didn't. Uh, a minestrone, like brothy type of soup really helped. When I did do pasta, I will say I bumped up the iron and protein content tremendously and fiber content by using chickpea pasta. So if you haven't heard of chickpea, it's an amazing brand. So it's so high in nutrition compared to other pasta. This could go back in the overall category. Someone asked about trying to conceive, how long did it take? And honestly, I don't know with Max because it was just like, whoops, and we found out. But then I never got my period in between Max and Liv. I ovulated once and got pregnant with Liv. So I went without a period and then finally got it back because I was very intentional this time around. I wanted another baby with a two and a half year gap. So what I did was I started Moon Balance, which contains maca and shatavari and other herbs that are supposed to help with hormones and regulating your cycle. It helped me to get my cycle back. So I had one period after five whole years between breastfeeding and pregnancy with the first two. So got that period, ovulated, got pregnant, and here we are. So clearly the plant-based diet is very effective. Like I said, not just myself, but Dusty as well, have both been plant-based for nearly a decade. And honestly, we've probably gotten lucky on the first try with all three. So it's been really wonderful and we're very thankful. I got a question about important nutrients that I'm focusing on during pregnancy. So. My midwife kept reiterating to just kind of do what you have to do to get through first trimester, but then really hit the ground running with second trimester when it comes to nutrition, avoiding the junk foods and the refined sugars and processed things, and really focusing hard on a well-balanced variety of whole plant-based foods. So I'm putting a lot of emphasis on quality protein and iron, quality carbohydrates and lots of healthy fats, plus a few supplements that I find crucial, critical. <laughs> Actually, I use these whether I'm pregnant or not, but especially during pregnancy. So first and foremost, protein sources, bare minimum, say you can't get anything down, you just need something to get by, or you want an oomph to your morning smoothie, Sun Warrior organic plant-based protein has been a lifesaver for me through all three pregnancies, all three trimesters. So I add it to our morning green smoothies, and sometimes I'll also add it to our baked goods, like our blueberry muffins that I recently made in a video, and our oatmeals. Other than that, I am emphasizing a lot of whole food protein sources. So again, going back to the lentils, as well as beans, going into a lot of our soups and stews and curries, the oats themselves, and lots of greens that are going into smoothies and juices. Another thing I forgot I was craving towards the end of first trimester was I went through a stretch of like two or three weeks where I wanted tofu scramble nonstop. So I was eating it for lunch probably like three or four times a week, but it is so ridiculously healthy, especially if it's organic. Um, it's amazing. You can do so many things. We would add veggies and spinach and nutritional yeast and it tasted so, so good. As far as healthy fats, I'm just making sure to incorporate lots of healthy nuts and seeds. The highest sources of omega-3 fatty acids, which are most beneficial, are flax and chia seeds. So they go into smoothies and baked goods for us. And then hemp seeds are another great option. Walnuts are the best source as far as nuts go. And then there are lots of great nut and seed butters you can use as well. And as far as supplements, I find it super critical to incorporate an EPA and DHA. Again, I'm using the Sun Warrior brand for those. I take two a day. I swear by them. They just help me to stay sharp and feel my best. And I know that they're helping baby. Healthy carbohydrates. I really steer clear of the refined white breads, white pastas, 
um, sometimes white rice, but more so emphasizing brown rice. So all of these unrefined carbohydrates are super nourishing and not to mention tons of fruit. So I place an, a huge emphasis on lots of fruits and veggies in smoothies and juices and salads and snacks. The other two critical things are fiber and antioxidants. But if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet, you don't really need to worry. You're getting plenty of those in your diet with everything that you eat. As far as supplements go, I'm taking a whole food prenatal multi just one third of the daily dosage because it's divided into three, but I just take one pill a day. And then making sure I sometimes supplement with extra liquid B12, liquid D3, and plenty of natural daylight sunlight exposure is so good if you can get it on your forearms and your face for at least just 15 minutes a day, even in the cold, but for sure making sure to supplement that one and the omegas that I mentioned, and finally, a good quality probiotic. So I start the day every day with my seed probiotic, and it does wonders for digestion. I had one really funny question. Someone was like, wait, did I just see you running at 19 weeks pregnant? How does your pelvic floor allow you to do that? <laughs> and similar to having a healthy diet and a healthy start before becoming pregnant, same goes for fitness. So a lot of experts will advise that you don't start anything new once you're already pregnant. So that's all the more reason to start physical activity, exercise, fitness before conceiving. So I have been a runner pretty much as long as I can remember. So that has helped me tremendously. I also attribute pelvic floor strength to rebounding. So we have a mini rebounder trampoline in the garage. After I was good and healed up, I began just kind of bouncing. And then when I felt more comfortable jumping, it really helps again with blood flow, circulation, lymph, digestion, even cellulite some people say, but it can also be really good for strengthening things down here. Just overall fitness will help as well. And if you wanna kind of work on strengthening your core and your pelvic floor and all of this area, there are tons of exercise videos and things you can practice. For me, one thing I practice with knitting everything together is flex your core as if somebody is about to punch you and see what that feels like. Try this instead. So strengthen your pelvic floor by almost pretending like you're picking up a pencil and do the same with your booty. So like all three holes down there are like <laughs> zipping up together and now tense your core like somebody's trying to punch you and feel how much more oomph like everything is just so much more knitted together and like steel almost so you can practice tensing and releasing in conjunction with your breath other two things with fitness even on my worst days where i felt super nauseous with all three pregnancies I still exercise consistently five to six days a week like I always have. Again, my body has already been conditioned to that and I actually found that the fitness and exercise helped me to feel better, especially during those nauseous days. But things have been tremendously better in second trimester, just like energy through the roof, my strength is back, my stamina is back, my endurance is back. What I have found very, very fun and engaging and helpful is my stationary bike. So I invested in a Peloton back in August and I'm so glad I got started right before I got pregnant because it's low impact, but still high intensity, which I really love intense workouts. So it's really nice because the workouts are different and engaging. I've also still been incorporating resistance training. I did find it a little bit more difficult just because even something like lunging or squatting sometimes made the nausea feel worse. But now I have been doing resistance training again, just at like a more moderate level, less intense and less heavy. And as far as modifications, the only things that I try to be extra cognizant of, if they're asking you to do anything lying on your stomach, or lying on your back, just skip ahead in the workout video or replace it with another version. So for me, if they're laying on their back doing leg lifts, instead I might just sit in this position and I'm in a little boat pose. Maybe I'll hold a weight and go like this. So there are always ways to avoid laying on your back, which can cut off circulation to the baby. Core workouts can cause coning and cause this ab separation leading to diastasis recti. So just being careful of your core and obviously it's too difficult to lay on your tummy. So avoiding like the laying on your stomach doing Superman. <laughs> as far as rest goes, I got a question about 
how to deal with low energy and extreme fatigue. And I would say make sure you get your blood work checked because it could be low iron or anemia. Just make sure it's not an iron issue. You would be very surprised how bummed you can feel if your iron is low. So if it is, maybe your midwife or your healthcare practitioner might have you go on an iron supplement just until it's back into the normal range. But I would say start there. Also, something I did was allowing for an extra hour of sleep. So in first trimester, I was sleeping nine, nine and a half hours, and now I'm back to about eight hours. So I was definitely allotting for at least an hour extra of sleep per night. I had a question about essential oils. So usually during first trimester, extremely strong scents can really bother you. And I have had aversions to essential oil use during all three pregnancies now and I've just listened to my body and decided to play it safe and steer clear. Now I'm at the point where like I could put something in my diffuser and it smells great and that's fine, but I've just steered clear of any of the topical use for now. So that's just a personal preference. Last but not least, something that I've done that has really helped me to feel supported and confident in my pregnancies is to rally the troops, so to get a support team. So I have an amazing midwife, like I said, who I'm very aligned with a doula, either one that I pick, I know I'll feel super aligned with getting on board and on the same page as your spouse as far as your birth plan goes. And then I also love prenatal massage. So finding an amazing massage therapist and or a chiropractor, which I have also found. So those are my go-tos on my squad, on my team. I also think whether you're doing like a hypnobirthing or meeting with somebody who can help you with different birth methods. There are tons like hypnobirthing, the Bradley method, someone who can help you to get your mind in the right place, I think could also be very beneficial. Oh, and also an OBGYN or a doctor, whether it's a family member or a friend, we have been so very blessed to have been connected with a plant-based Christian OBGYN who just moved to the area. So he has been a wealth of knowledge and help and support for us as well. So find your team, rally the troops, get the support where you need it. As far as support goes, if you guys are looking for more support, say you need the accountability to just stay on track with eating, moving, and resting your best. We just launched the Eat, Move, Rest Club, which is our yearly membership that houses all of our content in one central location for you. It gives you accountability with a community, a private Facebook group, access to all of our eBooks and other helpful PDF handouts, grocery shopping lists, instant access to our meal planner and recipe app, which is always growing and evolving with new recipe inspiration, as well as workouts and mindfulness and meditation tracks and wellness articles coming soon. So the part that we love most is getting to connect with all of you and seeing all of you connect with each other. So we do weekly live stream Q and A's and monthly group Zoom coaching calls. Sometimes what we really need is just to be surrounded by our people. So if you guys are interested, you can check out the membership linked below. I highly recommend it because like I said, you're getting everything all in one place for 75% off. Be sure to check it out and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in, bye. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzics. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within. 